Good morning and good afternoon and welcome to our next edition of Dream Reality with Iden Consulting. This is a podcast where we like to bring together people who are change makers, who are innovators, who really challenge the norm and see this as a time of opportunity. And today we're going to look at things slightly differently. This has been a really challenging time over the last 18 months for a lot of us. Whether it's, you know, the new working from home, the homeschooling, love it. Love it or hate it. Everybody's entitled to their own thing and everybody's different. But it's whether you enjoy the new online shopping or whether your business has suffered. It's been different. It's been hard on everybody. There's been a lot of challenges and upheaval and change. And as humans, we're not really very comfortable with change. We hear mm -hmm. it. We like to crawl under our little duvet and hide from it. Except for now. Now is a time where we're really embracing the change. And isn't that great? And now is the time to embrace that and keep that momentum going. And that's what we're trying to, go, to give here in these podcasts is to give you ideas and thoughts and link you to experts in these fields that will help you to continue your journey and to continue to your success. So today I am really excited to have Sarah DeVoy who is certified in cranial therapy, sorry, cranial sacral therapy. And I hope that I'm even pronouncing that right because it was really hard for me. I had no idea what this was. I'd never heard of it, but we had a great chat one afternoon and I thought that she would be awesome for this. So for, I will hand over to you, Sarah, to tell us a little bit about yourself and what exactly craniosacral therapy is, please. Thank you, Alison, for the warm introduction. And thank you so much for the monumental question, like what is craniosacral therapy? Because <laughs> yeah, just, just a small one to kick off, right? Absolutely, it's quite a scary term. But um, what I say to people when I meet them on the street is that I help people to settle their nervous systems. Because that for me is in essence what uh, craniosacral therapy has helped me to do. Uh, sometimes when they meet me, they think, oh, you've always been floating on a cloud. That's just the way you've always been. Uh, and when I tell them, oh, and I've done this and I've actually lived in this kind of world in the past, uh, they say, oh, ho, oh, ho. so you know all about like what this feels like then. <laughs> and if for those of you who can't see right now, I'm waving my hands around frantically. <laughs> so <laughs> over the years of um, a varied career, I've certainly know how to do things and doing was, uh, I would say, my middle name. Doing, 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 and doing for other people and taking responsibility and speeding up and doing things very fast. So I think a lot of us know what that feels like. And we know perhaps the impact and the toll that ha that has on our bodies as well. Okay, wow. And maybe, you know, and I love the, the way that um, you're able to, you know, I have done uh, one of your sessions with you and it was really you know uh, very enlightening as well you know it gave me so much to think about and put me in a real sense of calm and things because you know I do have a bit of a crazy life but I think that what is is really special as well is you know your wealth of experience and practical experience where you're able to relate to your clients and and their you know, the issues and, you know, the, the concerns maybe more than issues, but, you know, the things that weigh heavy of them, you're able to really relate to that in an experiential way. And so mm -hmm. I think that that's something that really helps to, um, to, to bring your strength and to bring strength to this whole, whole side of therapy. Would you, would you kind of yeah. agree that that really helps? Yeah, because I am a bit of a rebel, uh, and that's probably why we get on quite well together, Alison, <laughs> because if someone comes to me and says, you know what you should do? And I go, yes, okay, tell me what I should do then. And I'm sort of pursing my lips and waiting for the sort of list of things that they're going to tell me to do, you know, get up earlier and do your yoga and do this and do that. And I'm already feeling, oh, shit, I actually don't want to do that, you know, because you're putting me in this sort of hole, whereas I would much rather work with someone in, in a much more sensitive way and find out what is actually going to work for them. What, what is it that they're trying to solve and what are they willing to do about it rather than giving them a list of things you should do? Because let's face it, we're bombarded with stuff from Instagram and everywhere else telling us 
you know, the perfect diet and, you know, the perfect podcast and all these things that we should be doing. And um, that in itself is incredibly stressful, I find. The pressure, <laughs> and I, I have to agree with you, you know, I have a, a friend of mine who's big into meditation and she's like, you need to get up early and, you know, before the kids get up and, you know, do your meditation. And I'm like, I, I just can't. I don't need that pressure yeah. to feel like I should yeah. do it. I'm like, I yeah. like sleeping, you know, yeah. I like, <laughs> I like my bed. I like to sleep. I don't you know, yes, it would be yeah. good to meditate and things like that, but I mm. need to find the right place. And I think that, you know, that leads very nicely maybe into my first question mm. to you, which is really, you know, there is a real rise of the well-being, and you mentioned, you know, social, social media, and things there and you know I think that this especially now it is has really come really to the forefront even more so than 18 months ago you know mm -hmm. the the rise of meditation you know everything's moved online so you don't necessarily have to be with someone or go and visit someone so it can fit more into your lifestyle and you know I, I think a lot of it is you know, about being present, about being aware and things like that. And I just want to focus and get your perspective on the aspect of being present because mm. um, I read another article that is like, no, to hell with being present. If you're only present, you're going to miss that truck that's going to come and whack you, that's uh -huh. hurtling down the road in your direction. You need to be you need to really stop talking about being present and talk about being aware. Mm -hmm. and what, what's your perspective on that? I, 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 lo I love that article. I'd love to read that actually, Alison, because of course, I, I do have a bit of a bug there about the mindfulness thing. So apologies for everybody who oh, please, loves please. mindfulness. We, lo we love people with an opinion here. Yeah, no, the mindfulness thing, it, for me personally, and I can only speak about my experience, when I think of the mind, I tend to think of, of my little box up above my neck. And so I find that I'm spinning around in my mind a lot of the time, and I actually don't want to be more mindful. I don't want to be, I don't want my mind to be any fuller than it is, <laughs> if that makes yeah. sense. Mm -hmm. Whereas I, I would love the feeling of being more heartful and being more present in an embodied way. So that's another buzzword. So what does that actually mean? But I'd like to feel that when the truck's coming towards me, that I can be aware of the breeze and I can be aware of my body and navigating myself onto the out of the gutter and onto the curb so I can actually take action and I can actually move instead of being you know, waving around in my mind, if that makes sense. And there is an apology there to the mindfulness school because, you know, the good ones, I'm sure, are very aware of their bodies as well. But it, it can be something that um, can be misunderstood, I think, quite easily as something that only happens in the brain. Yeah, I, and I think that's a, you know, I, I think that sits very well in that you have to look at the whole rather than the part and if yeah. you think of it like that, it makes so much sense, you know, in, when you compare it to nature, to the environment, you can't just focus in on one thing. You have to zoom out and look and look at the whole. So, yeah. you know, these last 18 months has, has been quite a, I think, stressful. I think it's fair to say quite a stressful time for a lot of people. And whether it's, you know, stress that was already there that maybe they weren't as aware of and now they, you know, they're more aware of it or whether it's the new stress of, you know, health concerns, you know, the anxiety for, of families, health, of, you know, different, different contributors. There's so many, whether it's, you know, how can I get my work done and make sure my children's education keeps going? How can I buy the, the normal food shop? where I was just going to the supermarket and I have no idea how to navigate the online platform for online shopping. Yeah. So, you know, these, these are, there's different levels of stress for different people. Um, mm. But we're all maybe, I think, fair to say, a little bit more stressed now than we were. And do you see that when you're talking to, to your clients and people around you? 
Absolutely, Alison. And uh, for me, this whole pandemic has been such, um, shall I say, not exactly an insult on our humanity, but all the things that we held dear to us, all the things that we could previously rely on, had a bad day, I can go and hug my mum, or, or yeah. you know, had a rough day, you know, I can do this, or I've got the sanctuary of my home away from work, or whatever it was. Um, all of that has been turned upside down. And, you know, the joy of going shopping or the joy of, of meeting people just casually or whatever, all of that is, is it safe? You know, uh, it, there's all that safety issue all the time. And that for me gets to the very core of our nervous system, okay. which, which, which we could speak a little bit more about if you'd like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, please just keep, keep yeah, going well, and I'll keep my well, eyes well, I, I, I put and, all and on the air, please. On the nervous system, yeah. So yeah, to give the listeners just a little potted view, okay, the kinds of stresses that we might have been aware of before could have been, say, the busy, busy. So we know all about that and say, I'm sure Alison and I know all about how to be busy, busy, busy. And um, that sense, I mean, if you take yourself for a minute and if you're listening, I'd love you to engage with this in not just with your mind, but with your body as well, just to feel into that sense of, you know, how is it for you when you've got that little bit too much to do? You're in the kitchen, it could be breakfast time. You know, you've got to get to that meeting on the Zoom or whatever it is. And somebody else comes in, sideslines you with 56 things that they can't find in the sock drawer and they need you to pay that bill and the dog's barking and the cat needs to be fed, whatever it is all at once. So, so I just, just sensing that feeling in your body right now of that all at once type feeling. And just take a breath with that, just to feel how that is. So just noticing those components, right? That I think, you know, you could give me some of those of what you notice actually, Alison, what, what's that? How is that for you? I just get, you know, I'm completely overwhelmed. And I find that, you know, I become very short tempered, very snappy. Yes. You know, yeah. and, and you know, it's like, no, don't do that. Or would you just get your shoes on? You know, yeah. Your, your tone Absolutely. changes because you're like very, very anxious. Yeah. So we feel it in our body. We feel it in our jaw. It's all got to happen right now. And, you know, we can't even possibly defer it. It's all got to happen right now, right now. So that's a very familiar stress for a lot of us. So important just to notice that that is there. And sometimes we switch completely into total, total overwhelm. There's a kind of a default mechanism in our nervous system. You might have seen it if ever your dog um, attacked a rabbit or um, you know, a, a mouse was attacked. We, we, tend, we feign dead, if you like. We just sort of say, oh my God, I can't take this anymore. And our modern version of that is, I believe, just scrolling when we've just had too much of something. We'll mm -hmm. sit there and we maybe find ourselves kind of you know, going through social media, getting lost in a way because we just don't know what else to do. We've just lost, or maybe some people would turn then to maybe a little bit of too much overeating or doing something else to sort of pacify themselves and to sort of numb themselves in some ways, yeah? Mm -hmm. So some of these states are quite familiar to us. And I feel that the key to coming out of these states into the state that I'm going to name in a minute that I think is what we all want more of um, is a lot of self-compassion. You know, sometimes we load even more onto ourselves and say, you know, you really should do yoga when you're scrolling and you really should go for that walk. But we, that we should ban the word should. Yes, but I just feel particularly now we need to really be very gentle to ourselves. We've experienced a massive social shock phenomena and all of the goodies have been taken away from us. All the lovely heartfelt moments with our friends and just chilling out in the park. They've all, they're coming back. We're on the turning hopefully now, but we, we've, we've lived through um, horrendous shock situation, all of us have. And so it's how can we come out of that? Some of, some of us may feel it quite hard to even come into the social space again, to be seen, um, to be held. Can we dare to have a hug with somebody? Oh my God, you know? And it, it's a huge big step to come from that maybe quite dull, quite dark space that we've been in that isolated state and to come back into the, the lovely bright human beings that most of us have been for a lot of our lives. So it's a big, big step. 
Mm -hmm. But what just before I sort of complete this little piece, I'd love people just to have a sense of that part of them that they do know, that balanced state, which um, really relates to the vagus nerve, actually, that we could speak to another time. But that sense that of when you're feeling on the top of the world, it might have been um, a moment when you didn't have a care in the world, when you just completed some amazing exam, or a moment when um, I don't know, you, 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 you fell in love or something really joyful and connected and freeing. Can you, can you take yourself to that place, Alison? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, very easily. <laughs> yes. So that feeling when you just, you know, when you broke out of lockdown and you could suddenly travel out of your county or get to that gorgeous woods or those mountains or those sea, that beautiful seascape. So even feeling that in your body right now, that sense of freedom that mm -hmm. sense of connection, that sense of purpose. You see, I'm, I can't see any of your faces and I'll never know what the- I, I'm, I have a big beaming smile on mine. Yeah, so even allowing that smile to come to you as you're listening is one sort of simple way of hacking your nervous system, if you like that phrase, of actually allowing yourself, yeah, I can feel this, I know this in my being. And maybe I've been in hibernation or covidization or whatever it is for a while, but I can know this again. I can know this good feeling. Wow. And, you know, I think even just doing that small exercise of, of thinking about it and being present and in the, in the moment, just to get the awareness of imagining yourself in those situations, thinking mm. about how does that make me feel? Mm. And, in itself and just doing that soft like just for me personally just impacts me straight away I feel differently now yes. compared to you know 10 minutes ago and it's really I think just taking the time and what I took from our our session and really one of the main reasons why I wanted to hear you speak on the podcast was really to mm. to share this with people and to as well I think for for me personally I and my husband will be, you know, he he tells me this all the time, is that when something bothers me, I stuff it in a little bottle and I just keep going, you know, and I stuff mm -hmm. it in a little bottle and I just keep going. Or if I'm super busy, you know, the busyness and the annoyance gets stuffed in a little bottle and I just keep going. And then one day that bottle erupts and boy, does that erupt. Uh -huh. and I think that really now I have, I have, kind of taught myself that yes this is a reaction to the way I'm feeling but I can change that I, I I acknowledge it and I'm like okay but I don't you know then I look at it do all of these 10 things need to be done right now no okay focus on one task and mm -hmm. move on and I think it really helped me to work through that and to get rid of the overwhelmed sense that I think is so easy for us to feel right now at this time yeah, and I, yeah, and I think what you're saying is just so very human, Alison. And I think if I could just say a last little summary, because people might have just come in at this point, like when we are in the overwhelm, if we can just come to that recognition, say, oh, here I am again, that familiar place. And rather than coming in with self-blame, you're a terrible person for feeling this, it may be, I mean, we've heard of the virtual hug. I mean, how about actually giving yourself a hug? And just giving yourself that little bit of holding and grounding and saying, okay, I can do this. I can navigate, if that makes any sense, back to that calm, positive state. I can row back out of that chaotic space and come to that place in my, in my, that I'll be sensing in my body, not just in my head. Mm -hmm. And maybe just by holding ourselves and pausing for a moment, that, that can be a, a very supportive thing to do. Yeah. So, yeah, and I think that, you know, it's the, um, I posted an article recently on, on LinkedIn on, um, I can't remember the name of it, uh, thermal clipped mania or something like this, but it basically is the, um, the, the body physically cools itself when there is no touch. And uh -huh. it's not even the, the aspect of touch, but it's that element of connection of person. Yes. And it's the person to person connection that we are missing because through Zoom, you don't get it. 
it has yeah. to be so you don't even need to be touching a person but you should be physically close to them distanced yeah. i know everything but you know oh. even your two meters and having a chat or having a having a coffee is enough mm. to raise your physical body temperature and by raising oh. your physical body temperature it releases endorphins as well within you and it has so many um benefits for your physical health and so when we say that yes you know you feel better when you connect with people if you actually mm. it's proven scientifically that your body temperature will rise and you will physically feel better as well yeah, and it. yeah. it's, it's really it's really fascinating that now the science is kind of coming out to 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 really prove that you know when you say you know give yourself a hug just that act of doing that and the act of touch, even of yourself, really stimulates something within to really release that that self-love. Absolutely. No, you're, you're totally on it. And I mean, even I would I would invite people, you know, particularly people who may use a skin cream. I'm just stroking my head now. But like, you know, we do all these things in a rushed, impulsive way. But, um, you know, working as a craniosacral therapist, it's just like there's so many nervous uh, parts of our nervous system that are, that are all moving around our face all the time. And even if we can gently soothe our skin, soothe our brow, in a way, it's a kind of a reparenting of saying, you know what, Sarah, it's going to be OK. So, yeah. you know, even as we brush our hair in the morning and we do these simple things, mm -hmm. we can actually be nourishing ourselves as well and supporting our capacity, first of all, to connect with ourselves. And then, as you say, um, enjoy that connection with others, which is so supportive and nourishing. Wow. Okay. Yeah, definitely so, a lot to think about there. You know, because guilty as charged, I slap on the face cream and run out the door. And <laughs> so <laughs> I'm good at maybe not in the morning. With that and say, and I, you you know, know, maybe, maybe I'll try. Maybe I'll slower. try it tonight with my night cream because then I'll, you know, I have the time. I get, I can do a little bit of, you know, slow rubbing it in. I, uh, you know, they'll love my bed a little bit too much to, you know, <laughs> to do yeah, it. Actually, I'm thinking of another. You did ask me about a song there, Alison, earlier on. So, you know, I was thinking of, I'm not sure how appropriate it is, but um, is it Eric Clapton's Slow Hand? Is it, okay. I, I love <laughs> something with a slow hand. So we could come up with some fun. Fun songs that help us all to slow down. That's you know? it. I love that. Yes. Yeah. So look, um, last last question before we move on to the, the recommendations, because you've given us so many suggestions and, and you know, ideas and, and concepts to really explore further. Um, and this podcast is called Dream Reality. So mm -hmm. How, how would you love to see this area of craniosacral therapy and, you know, the awareness of the nervous systems and the way we manage our stressors? How, in a, in a, how would you dream that this would move forward in the future? And mm -hmm. then maybe a bit of a reality check. How do you actually think it's going to maybe play out? Oh, wow. That's what a gorgeous question, Alison. Yeah. Well, one of my passions, and I think that's linked with what you're asking me, is for us to begin to acknowledge the consciousness and the awareness of us as human beings from the very moment, in my understanding, of, of from, from conception on ways, onwards. There is sometimes this idea that, you know, we can do what we like really during the pregnancy, you know, we can get away with things, but gosh, when I actually give birth, now I've got to really cop on and honor this human being and be the best parent that I can be and um, you know maybe we can get away with it some people would say for the first two years you can you know because they're not really conscious you know <laughs> but, uh, or maybe when they're five years old I really need to wake up to what they're feeling and everything that I'm doing and all of my actions maybe from five years on but uh, that would be just like a wonderful dream of mine that we would all have that sensitivity and that awareness to communicate with our little ones in utero and that we would acknowledge uh, uh, them from the get-go and acknowledge their feelings and acknowledge that, that they're incredibly intelligent and incredibly aware. And uh, that I feel would have a massive impact on humanity as a whole. And wow. if as you say, that is 
too big of an ask. Um, <laughs> just even slowing down a little bit. I mean, just a little bit. When And actually when we see uh, colleagues at work, maybe just in a way, just, just taking a moment and just saying, wow, that person has a life. That person has a whole story that mm -hmm. I may never know. And I welcome that as well. You know, that's just a huge thing, isn't it? Wow, that's very, very touching and very, you know, it's, it's, it's lovely. I mean, the, the, the unborn child aspect, you know, I, I think that it's, it's something that, you know, is, is definitely becoming more and more popular when in documented and articles and in the news. So, hmm. uh, you know, maybe your dream will come true. You don't know. And I think it's, it's going to be pretty easy for us to take the time to get to know colleagues and to, you know, to slow down and maybe not take so much on our plates and maybe, you know, be, be conscious that um, I heard a lovely analogy a few years ago of, you know, everybody has a lot on their plate. Mm -hmm. It's just some people have a paper plate and some people have a big steel iron plate that could hold the Empire State Building. But everybody has a full plate. It's just how strong is that plate? And so we have to be receptive of that and just to, to acknowledge it and be respectful of people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's a lovely image as well. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, Sarah, thank you for that. Uh, a quick one on recommendations. So mm. I asked you to, um, if you have a book or a podcast that you would like to recommend us. Yes, but there are so many, as you say. Well, there is. And I'm and happy to take a list. We'll put them <laughs> in the show notes afterwards. So don't worry. I Okay, well, so oh, I, I love to be around people that really walk the talk. And so I, I, I feel that if I meet people like that, and I've had the privilege to meet a number of people like that, you kind of sense it straight away. And they may not be on Instagram. <laughs> Just, <laughs> they may be, they may not be. But they'll have really done something physical with their body often, or they'll have really experienced something very real and tangible. So one of the people I've had the privilege to meet is Philip Shepherd. Uh, he has an extraordinary wealth of knowledge, insight. Uh, he has some things on YouTube. Um, he wrote a book called Radical Wholeness. Okay. And... You know, you can read that, you can listen to him. I'd really recommend uh, a lot of his meditations and exercises because to me, they, having been around this work for years and years, he has quite a twist on the whole thing. And he, okay. he, he says, look, the brain, that's fine. But he speaks of the body as, as, as being a bit of a brain taxi. That's sometimes the way we look at it, you know? <laughs> and uh, he encourages, you know, it's way more than that. So yeah. it, it's quite an adventure, some of his work, and it brings us into a real deep sense of presence and being, which mm -hmm. I find tremendously useful. Yeah. yeah. Wow, what a recommendation. I think we'll have to check that one, add that onto the reading list. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, just, just a female counterpart, I couldn't say enough uh, about uh, Tara Brack. Um, oh, she's yes. Such, mm -hmm. such a warm, positive person. And if anyone has a particular thing that they're, they're working with or challenged by, be it a dependency or be it some emotional state or whatever, uh, her, her lovely flow and, um, you know, recommendations about how to be with those emotional states, that identifying them as not being all of us is, is very, very fundamental, I feel, very useful. Yeah. Fabulous. Fabulous. She's deeply heartfelt. And I mean, if the heart's in it, you know, we're onto a winner. Set. We're, we're yeah. all over it then. Fabulous. Yeah. And then I know that you, re you mentioned uh, Eric Clapton, Jared, you know, just before, but is that your, your song recommendation or do you have another favorite little? Yeah. Little I think works you up. I think if you're only going to give me one, I think uh, I love Leonard Cohen and I, I, I will personally debate into the small hours of the night if someone tells me that he's depressive because <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, I love 
particularly the phrase, and that's how the light gets in, which of course comes from Rumi anyway, mm -hmm. but um, because in a way that's the very essence of craniosacralis, but in a, in a way it's the essence of healing, because, you know, if somebody thinks they've got a problem or they've got a worry, you know, in a way I feel that's a bit like my girl guide badge, all the things that I've lived through in my life, they're like my badges of honor that yeah. help me to see myself a little bit more clearly. So in a way, that's, that's why I love it when he says, but it's going to make me cry now. And that's how there's a crack in everything. Uh, and that's how the light gets in, which is actually just cracks in our sutures of our, of our skull as well, which is the essence of cranio. That's why we can feel that lovely flow and that, um, you know, that rhythm uh, uh, when we hold different parts of the body. But that's an aside. But I just love Leonard Cohen and his soulful um, way of, of understanding the universe. Wow, what a recommendation. Listen, yeah. Sarah, it has been uh, super fast. I mean, the time has absolutely flown. I really think that we could have spoken for hours and hours on this. And I really hope that our listeners and whoever's watching really get some takeaways to really understand, to recognize the symptoms of their overwhelmed or their stress, recognize it, and then to, to see those symptoms come on and really move on so that they can leave them behind and not let things build up and know that this is only part of their journey and not something that they need to be defined by. And mm -hmm. I think that, you know, definitely below we have Sarah's uh, social media uh, details. So uh, I think that, you know, that she's definitely one to follow. She posts some fantastic articles on LinkedIn, I know. Uh, so absolutely, thank you so much for your time today. It has Perfect. been a fantastic conversation. I really loved it. And I'm completely in, relaxed and in the zone now. And uh, I wish you a really successful rest of the day. Thank you so much, Alison. And a joy to be with you too. Thank you. Thank you.